Now, I am very pleased to introduce Katzen, Paradoxon and Praetoriana to you. These two are organized in the Decentral Association in Leipzig, Eastern East Germany, Saxonia, and they will be able to tell you what uh, all that old hardware that's gathering probably in the shelf behind you could be used other than being discarded. And here for you is Hardware for Future with discarded, helping with non-used hardware. Hi, my name is Jan Fuchs and my name is Alexander and we would like to tell you how hardware that's being put out of use can be helped to make people participate in the digital society. It started with a simple idea, there are many unused computers gathering dust in cellars and companies actually paying money to dispose of these old pieces of hardware. On the other hand, which probably you can't imagine, there are people that do not have a computer at home, so there's a digital injustice. And these old devices are a great burden to the environment. In 2017, for example, the German Statistics Authority uh, had a number of certain number of kilograms of electronic waste per person. So, this position isn't really done in the correct way. It's 10 kilograms per person. It, electronic waste was often exported and ends up in the so called toxic city in Ghana. It all started at the 36. Congress, uh, which is called Resource Exhaustion, and the city of Leipzig has an own authority, uh, digital authority, it was looking for a project partner to enable digital participation. And the whole <coughs> thing was <coughs> seen in the context of the climate emergency that was announced in that year. And this is where the Dezentrale Association in Leipzig comes into play. We worked with the office in the city, but we are in workshops and events. And uh, the technology, technology surgery that we ran was becoming more and more popular. And we gathered information and collected some interested people. And in early April, the broad planning uh, was completed and the name Hardware for Future was born. The intention was clear. There are too many households in the city of Leipzig that don't have the means to buy a computer and participate in the digital world, the it, which is a difficult conditions for homeschooling, for example, in the lockdown. So many people are falling through the digital uh, safety net and we had to act, therefore, and started to be by redesigning our hack space. A storage place was found that we could redesign, and it contained work areas, uh, storage, just clean it all up, put in a few LEDs, and all that's, that's all fine, right? Well, <coughs> we need an e needed an email address, we needed a few other things. And we needed to gather donations, which came during that year from the city's IT partner. Then we got some publicity in the city, and then we knew we have to get started, really have to get started. But there were things still missing. So let's take a breath and see what needs to be done. We just use a few open source programs that we know anyway. And the flood of mail, how can we deal with that? Of course, we need a ticket system for that. We know that from work. So we installed OS Ticket. With every new email, a ticket was created, and we can give standard responses from templates. So that gave us the opportunity to sort through the queries and find whether this is a donation or whether it's uh, the, 
in the announcement of a need. And we could then send some pre-made answers and save some effort. So quite involuntarily, we had created the main program for getting in contact with our donors. And uh, the other item was Nextcloud. We had to have a space to leave some data, such as inventory lists and several things. And in order to work on documents collaboratively, we also use only Office because Nextcloud gathers uh, an amazing amount of functions through plugins, we could also introduce Element there, which is a client for the Matrix messenger system. And that's something we had wanted anyway. To, and we then created several channels to discuss various issues, such as deployment, of an inventory. It also serves as a point of call for questions and for interested people that may want to join us. And with Corona, of course, schools have to become the focus, a very special focus. And through some publications, we got in touch with many responsible people in schools. And we defined the objectives early on. We wanted to make reuse of hardware easier and we wanted to make it accessible for unexperienced users. And from the beginning, our focus was on company donations, which gave us um, a lot of similar devices, but it also created a problem because many people wanted to give us donations during work hours. But if you have a place you can call and someone telling us we will give you 50 PCs uh, tomorrow, that made us realize that we don't have enough space to collect more than a few laptops, perhaps. But we don't want to reject any donations either. So we opened a third collection point and while we're at it, of course, we can just use the whole of the hack space, we said. And that was what happened. Every space in the storage room was used for the vast amounts of stuff we had to store and uh, things were piling up until up to the ceiling. And of course, if we hadn't had the pandemic, which made mean, meant that many events were paused. We would have had many more problems. We got private donations as well, but these are very varied and often very old. But we could collect these after work hours. Some gave us some very interesting accessories. Mice with balls, disk drives, old SATA hard disks. One of the few, uh, one of the many, just just some of the many uh, examples that one of our early problems, which you probably cannot imagine, was we didn't have any socket and any electricity cables because we need two of those for every old computer for the um, tower and for the monitor. So you may be thinking, what? Everyone has boxes of those at home. True, but we didn't have any left. So we actually had to get and buy some electricity cables, which fortunately is no longer necessary, have actually raised our storage. And at the beginning, we, we were thinking of using USB sticks with ISO images for Linux installation, of course. Put them in, put them in, and, and that's it. We thought, and we opted for Ubuntu 20.04 LTS because we wanted to make it easy for for new users to find solutions for the problems they may encounter. So plug in the USB stick, boot it, and after a few key presses and about 10 minutes time, the uh, 
uh, Linux was ready, readily installed that we could uh, on a computer that we could then give out. Of course, there were a few teeth in problems. We hardly had any queries about the operating system. What you get are some home-made problems from keyboard layout when people modified their keyboard layout settings or their language settings, but we could solve those easily. The question for the starting password is a very, very popular one, which we could always answer by saying, please look at the sticker that we put onto your computer, because that's where the information is. But there were some curious questions. How can I install the Bluetooth software? I've downloaded all kinds of things already. And of course, the user question, is, has the internet been built into the device already? And then we have the one that should not be named, Windows 10, if there was a license, uh, updates. So there was a program that we installed to quickly update Firefox and, and, and others. And uh, we had to write a PowerShell script to deal with some privacy issues, but it still takes a whole lot of time. After 45 minutes and a lot of manual work, we had ready to use version. So the second version of our USB stick was based on FAY, fully automatic installations, installation, and that was quite satisfactory to us, despite some very small problems. As the name says, the installation is automatic, and this has been an issue at the topic at the Chemnitz Linux days, a lot of uh, several events, and uh, it's quite easy to use. And that got us through the worst problems. The only thing that was left was to boot the computer via the network. So we'll watch the installation process for FAI in this screen grab. A mini live system is first booted via PXE and ends up directly in the RAM of the computer. You can then choose your profile. You have to confirm once to erase the, di the data on the disk and the program explains how the computer is going to be partitioned, the hard disk, what packages are going to be installed, and those things. And that was also our first problem for the solution for the language problem. And uh, the standard, the defaults for the configuration was also reflected, giving us a German-based system with the German keyboard layout quite easily. The profile uses Ubuntu, installs Firefox, LibreOffice, and other common pieces of software. And thanks to these profiles, there are some other bits that we can add easily. And, and uh, we can also, by using uh, this network-based booting, avoid cop having to copy data onto USB sticks. So we have a Ubuntu without having to, uh, it's, it's always recent, the Ubuntu we install, we don't have to install updates after the installation. Since we would normally install several computers at the same time, we uh, introduced a cache for the data that so that we wouldn't have to download it from Ubuntu all the time. And we had a, an apt proxy that we configured so we can download new packages and store them in the cache and for each new installation download it directly from the LAN, which has a nice side effect, which is that we can, uh, can actually also run the installations offline. We had an instance where Jan's company donated a computer and this was supposed to be upgraded um, 
with um, by him and his colleagues with, without having to overburden without overburdening the guest Wi-Fi, and that was quite easy to implement using this technology. So where there were no delays, and six or seven computers can be installed at the same time, because the computers do the most work. Uh, by as they install the packages on their drives. So we are in quite good control of the installation process. And so we prepare the so-called sysprep image on a hard disk, which is a normal Windows installation, actually. Uh, this is for Windows, I guess. and. Uh, that is then added to with some necessary drivers, and the Windows is then downloaded in the regular way and can be installed on new computers. And ultimately, the software we use is Clonezilla. So we added this as a menu item in the PXE menu, which starts Clonezilla. The images are on a Samba server, and copying these images then is the limiting factor for the installations. A single computer needs about five minutes to copy this, but if several computers are trying this at the same time, you have several hundreds of gigabytes going through the line, and uh, that is the limiting factor. Then we restart the computers, see that the system is active, we have the licenses, that we have to consider, and then uh, we can run updates. And updates are the main disadvantage here, because we have to update the image that we install regularly in order to not have to up install too many updates after the individual installations. Uh, we didn't have to install an extra Viso server, because that would have entailed other problems. Because we always have different computers normally, this kind of procedure is only really useful for larger donation from companies that gives us a larger number of identical devices. So, how do the end users get their laptops? In the beginning, we had an email address where people could contact us, and then we had a um, preliminary sorting, and we also asked them some questions to vet whether they were they really required a um, computer and in case of um, cooperation with schools the uh, computers are delivered to the schools we have already gotten and um, cleaned up and restored about 700 computers which took a lot of work and I would estimate that for one computer, all in all, all efforts included, all the bureaucratics and everything, we have about one hour um, that we put into each device. So that was 700 hours of work. So that means 20 hours per work, all voluntary, all done by volunteers who do that um, on top of their day jobs and uh, their familial engagements. So what did we learn from all of this? We uh, learned that it is indeed a lot of work. So we are always still looking for ways to, um, to delegate efforts. For example, the distribution. We are always getting new requests. So we're uh, really glad to see that um, there are sep um, similar projects in other cities, for example, in Halle. We don't have problems updating and restoring normal systems, but um, the space really is a problem because um, Many me people need to work at the same time and not get in each other's way. 
kann ein sehr schöner Punkt sein, um Firmen zu motivieren. And this is a very good project where you can also motivate um, companies to take part and to put in effort. But not all of our expectations could be matched. Reality just hits differently because many people don't have internet at home. So we usually ask people whether Uh, the computer is next to the router if they need a LAN cable or whether they need a router. One um, participant said, for example, that uh, they only use internet on their phone or some people even don't use email. Dass sie überhaupt eine Nachricht abgesendet haben. Some people were not aware that they just sent an email because they were missing the green check marks. Also, reference lines are an unknown thing for some people. Sometimes we get the whole message in the reference line. Or we get emails without reference lines. So, sometimes We get emails um, with donation in the reference line and we don't know whether it's a donation that is going towards us or that they want us to donate hardware to them. And also without open source, we wouldn't have been able to pull all of this through, even if it requires many efforts. And uh, we would rather spend money on um, Wi-Fi adapters rather than proprietary software. And also we're very grateful to have our volunteers who do so much work, whether it be physical hauling computers from place to place or virtual tracking tickets. In Gänze einen Erfolg, äh, And we need all of those contributions for the whole project to be a success. What do we want in the future? Blooming landscapes, of course, but um, we don't know concretely how much of that we, want, uh, we can realize. We would like to offer workshops for people how to use computers and when doing that we could also do crypto parties we would like to get a better connection to our partners for example we could create a chat channel on the device where the community can help themselves and of course we would like to get into schools more and enable digital participation and actively promote it But before we get to that, a very simple organizational topic, our inventory. We want to have a new inventory system that allows us to track our devices better, to see how many devices we've already installed and how many of those actually show up in the system while installing and we don't want to have to update Excel sheets manually and of course we're also very interested in secure hard disk deletion and to automize that. That would be very useful for us, especially to take away the worries of our donators. We're working on a script, but um, it isn't finalized yet. And the question is also whether that is possible, because deleting hard disks is a very time intensive and labor intensive thing. And also we would like to do the Windows image installation in the same step. And then we have the problem that not everyone has internet. 
and of course that would in that would call for a participation with Freifunk. Freifunk uh, Leipzig used to have a huge Freifunk community. Why not use that approach to enable more free internet for everyone? So that was it from our short introduction. Thank you for listening. And we're happy to receive hardware donations from whomever it may be. Thank you. So, ja. Katzenparadoxon and Pretoriana, thank you very much for your presentation and your stories from the trenches of empowerment and technological enablement. We still have some time left for Q&A, so call for participation for anyone watching the stream. Post your questions into the chat and we'll try to answer them. I would like to start with the first question from the pad, which is how do you prevent in such a project um, self-exploitation? Well, self-exploitation is a very hard word. We knew that when we launched this project that it is a very important ecological topic. But also uh, Corona came on top and digital injustice is very much um, exacerbated by the coronavirus crisis. Of course, at the beginning especially, we invested much more time than would have been sensible, but the issue is just so pressing and important. And also a lot of people were motivated to help out uh, so that we could put the load on more shoulders. And now uh, we're also getting support from authorities and uh, public organizations. Okay, we're seeing more and more questions. That's a very good thing. Next questions. Regarding going to schools, there's also the Chaos Macht Schule, Chaos at School team in Germany and Austria. Is What is the difference to your uh, efforts. Yeah, of course, we have the case at school team, but um, us in Leipzig, we're very local. We went to local schools from the beginning and started a collaboration and it's become more important to us, the whole school thing, because of Corona. It made it very difficult to personally hand over the hardware. So that is why we want to do it more in the future. Be more visible at school, involve teachers, social workers, and so on, in order to enable a decentral distribution of hardware. Yeah, and you have to say it's different from school to school. It depends on the people involved. It depends on whether you find an interested and engaged teacher or principal. And 
In the end, communication is key and personal contact is very important to build and maintain those personal relationships. So it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. You have to find individual ways to approach different schools. But that's also a good thing because um, we can distribute many computers to schools. Now we're getting a few technical questions. Are most computers delivered with or without SSD and how do you get replacements? <laughs> Most computers from companies are pretty complete and up to date. So they're about three, four, or five years old. But many computers still have outdated um, hard disks. We had uh, computers with SSD, especially from private donors. That was almost always the case. SSDs help us and companies because there's secure ways of deleting them. So um, you don't have to overwrite them several times. You can put crypto on that so that the data will not be legible afterwards. Sometimes we also get computers without hard disks and we buy SSDs in bulk, about 180 gigabyte and um, that is financed. Um, by um, support by the city and uh, private donations. We would prefer saving a laptop that doesn't have a hard drive, a hard disk, rather than um, letting it go to waste. Was aus der, aus der Praxis, uh, wie kann man euch Dinge schicken, wenn man außerhalb Leipzig Deutschlands wohnt? So, how can, next question, how can one send you things if you don't live, how if one does not live in Leipzig, Germany? Well, the best thing would be to build up a project locally yourself rather than sending us things. Then there are, in many cities, there is a need to, or a, an interest to support us, but what would be best if, is if people on the ground would be looking, what makes spaces do I have in my area, which companies are there that may be working in this field, and what perhaps like to start a project, but alternatively, if you are in the region, perhaps you could arrange for, to meet us. Uh, in Corona times, it's of course not easy, not really possible to just drop in. Um, and yes, you could also hand in your devices then. But we only work locally in Leipzig and surroundings. There are some larger organizations that approach this at a larger scale. Um, computer Tour is one, I didn't get the other one. And on our website, you find nice, on, on their website, you find nice maps telling you how you can and where you can donate your devices locally without having to send them all the way to us. And there will be a talk on this in this DVOC as well from them. And that gets me, to, I'll now give you two questions packed into one. How can you get organized, form gangs? Uh, so the question is, are you considering cooperating with similar projects? And uh, how could a cooperation be shaped? And I'll add to that the question, we are thinking about starting a similar project in our region. Could
could you help us building up such a project or do you help building up similar projects? We like to help. If there are questions, technological support, or exchanging experiences about early mistakes, computer, true and real, uh, uh, these two uh, offer help as well. So you can ask them as well. We haven't built up a uh, repository of, of helpful information yet. Regarding cooperation, if people offer donations to us that are not really resource effective because they're not nearby, we are referring those to these other organizations and there was a, an idea together with Computer Truhe that two to four or more various organizations that work in this field should get together and form a round table to talk across Germany about how we can bundle our resources better. And locally, we are quite well networked be it with the computer tour in Chemnitz or a project in Halle, uh, which is quite nearby. So from the beginning, we have been able to give support. If you do have a question, come to us, write an email, we could arrange to meet and tell you how we struggled at the beginning. And we do like to help with debugging the Ansible's playbooks that we wrote, for example, that you may um, be using. We have been able to get things running reasonably well. And I can add the next question directly, the one that came in last. How can you people reach you best to get into contact? Well, the best way would be really to use the Dezentrale Matrix server, where we have a hardware for future channel, but you can use email, which will go through the usual ticket system then before it reaches us. So it may take a bit longer to be responded to. And should Corona at some point be more or less over, you are welcome to visit us once we are more or less safe from Corona. Okay, I'll now summarize two more questions into one. And one is regarding the talk, how did you get to cooperate with the municipality of Leipzig and how did companies become aware of you as well? Are these companies look, do these, do they look for organizations? How do they find you? The city of Leipzig approached us at the Chaos Communication Congress in 2019, the 36C3, saying that they wanted to do something for sustainability. And from that, the idea grew that digital participation uh, should be furthered, and that led to the Hardware for Future projects. We were very lucky there. And we, as we said in the talk, we have this office for digital cooperation in Leipzig, which gave us a lot of support financially, but through contacts as well, and for reaching the first companies too, because the IT service provider for the city of Leipzig um, was able to donate and they were more flexible than others and they were told yeah let's do something and then other companies that become aware of us well we try to reach them through various channels be it through personally through people that we <coughs> get in touch with as donors and ask that they talk with their employers IT departments and we tell them that there are better ways to safely donate devices other than discarding of them, discard, discarding them in, in the waste. 
So that is the message. It is possible <coughs> to donate devices without disregarding data protection or privacy completely. We give you, we give help and tools that are cheap to use. And we don't have to have the admin working on the file on the device and overriding the hard disk for 30 days or something, and preferring them to just put, throw it away. There are ways to take care of these issues as the device is dislocated from the first place where it is. Just change the BitLocker encryption key or to use an old number of Linux scripts that deal with the SSD and erase it safely. Interesting. Right. Here is the next question, which is something very different. Do the tax authorities want you to declare stuff, even if everything is free of cost? We try, to the best of our conscience, to work as safely as possible. We are a registered charity. We receive donations, which we have to give receipts for. And then we have to prove that the people that are given the devices from us are in real need. So. We have the IT office of the city at, on our back there or <laughs> taking care of us there. Otherwise, we would have to apply all kinds of tests to make sure that that is the case. But luckily, through the city, we don't have to do this. We have to be, uh, we try to be as safe as possible because the charity status of our hack space cannot be endangered through this. And also, it has to be said, through these private donations, uh, they are not really regulated, and that gives us an opportunity to supply people that may just fall out of the uh, system for state support. So we have a bit of room for maneuver here with the private donations. And and so can, we are able to supply these people as well, those that may be just above the limits for needing support from the state or being eligible for support from the state. So that's interesting how you get these things done. I can't see any further questions. Oh, hang on. I would then, and then I would like to just thank uh, someone from, from Halle, the people that produced the video with us. Thank you, Milo from EPK in Halle. And a closing statement, perhaps? Something that you may want to tell those in the stream? If you have more questions, at, at 6 after this there will be a big blue button session. You'll find the link in the pad. Otherwise, we have a website, dezentrale.space, dezentrale being the German spelling for decentral. We have hardwareforfuture.de, our website that gives you information regularly. Talk to your IT departments, or if you are working in an IP, IT department, think about what you do with your old hardware. Could you donate infrastructure to Freifunk communities? Could you give computers, maybe without the hard disk if necessary, some companies say, okay, we'll give the old device together with the small financial contribution to save these devices from being put to waste. And digital injustice does still exist out there. And due to Corona uh, and through donations to schools, that hasn't really helped much. And we are really, really happy to be able to work in this. And we have a, put a, a lot of passion for this. We were given all these devices and we get them ready and we give them out. And if we can continue like this, even then, 
all over Leipzig. We can't even reach a small percentage of the people that are in real need. So it's very, very important to have this kind of work going on all over Germany and more devices being donated and all that. That is very important. Okay, thank you for that closing statement and the talk. And of course, thank you for your work. So Katzen, Paradoxon, Pretoriana, thank you. And if you want to keep in touch and talk more, join the Big Blue Button session in five minutes. The link is in the pad, the one that you used for the questions. and. Enjoy the further discussion and uh, keep giving people digital access. Thank you. Thank you.